Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we're going to take a look at the lemur again. We're going to do a couple little modifications. You can see you've already got, got it done here, but we're going to walk through it and uh, show you uh, little tips and tricks and free mods to help make this guy look a little better and perform a little better. We'll see. Let's get in there. So we're just messing with the light bar here. I pulled it off the roof. Unfortunately, it looks like they actually put the wire through the Lexan roof and then wired the light bar because it just went through this tiny hole. So I had to put a slit here so that we can get the wire out because obviously the servo wire is not fitting through this tiny little hole here. And um, yeah, so we slid that out. Also, it's mounted using just these little kind of L brackets, okay? So you can rotate the L brackets pretty easily. So we did that. And what I'm going to do is put some slits here in the front. And we're going to mount it nice and flush to the front. So it's not sitting on top of the roof, but instead in front. And that'll help, I think, make it look a little bit better. So we're just taking an X-Acto here. And I'm basically cutting some slots to fit the L brackets through. I'm not going to cut it all the way down. So I want it to be kind of stable because we're not going to actually use any screws to hold it in. It's just going to be kind of pressure held up against the roll cage and this roof line. So we'll see how that works, but just going to cut some slots and uh, stick it in there. We'll see. We'll unscrew the L bracket, push it through, screw it back in. Bam, just like so. Nice. We're going to do the other side. Bam. Just like that. We'll go ahead and screw this guy back in. Nice and snug right there on the roof. Man, I wish we didn't have to cut that. That would have been... I suppose I could have opened this up, but then you probably have to desolder it, resolder it. Ugh, what a mess. So we're just going to keep it like so. And make sure you space them correctly. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to be sad. But look at that. Much better. Much better. It's like a little baby Capra. Sad thing is they could have done this from the factory and it would have looked so much better. It didn't even take more screws. Although I guess it's a lot more work on the Lexan. But this gives you a fun little project to do because I think it greatly improves the look. A lot of people are saying this body is kind of toy-like or, you know, like Walmart toy, Walmart body-like. But um, I feel like changing the way this light bar is will kind of help that just a little bit, right? No? Yeah. I mean, I think it looks a lot better, a lot more low profile. We took our hood screws out so that we can mess with the wire a little bit. Yeah. There was your center of gravity too. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, it does, but not not enough to matter. Just want to make sure our light still works after messing with the wires, and we're good. Definitely better with this this light bar being lower. Definitely looks less a little less toy grade, right? A little less Walmart like. Pretty sweet, and still adjustable. And it's, it's stable. It's not going anywhere. So good stuff. I wish it came with headlights, but again, you can only ask for so much. Maybe we'll do something with this bumper. Could be cool to get this bumper kind of set up like so. Not sure on that yet, though, because we'll have to put screws through the front and that'll kind of mess up the whole look. Maybe we can make it work. I don't know. I think next I want to go ahead and do some shocks here. We'll figure out a way to kind of relocate or adjust the mounting of the shocks. Uh, if we move these rears forward like this, we're probably going to end up rubbing on this part of the chassis. So we may have to uh, get in there and do some heating and melting and kind of bend this tube chassis in a little. Maybe not ideal, but I don't know. I just, I really wish that we could, I wish they would have just made this a little bit more angled in and given us some shock mounting positions or notched it out or something. I don't know. 
um, or, or giving us uh, just shortened this up just a little, the whole chassis, just one tube length, shorten it up just a little bit. And then that would have given us the ability to move this bar in just a little bit and then uh, be able to put more shock mounting. I also think we're going to try to switch our battery to the front and the ESC to the rear. I just got to figure out how we're going to get our hood to open and close. Um, I think we can hinge it fairly easily just using the stock parts. I uh, just got to figure out a way to clip it down. I don't know how we're going to hold it. Hold the hood down is the issue right now. But I can figure that out too. Don't forget to do the simple mod of taking your screws out of the front C-hubs and moving them to the back. It'll give you a lot more turn radius and the CVDs nobody's ever had issues that i know of uh breaking cvds because of that extra turn radius so i would definitely do this it's pretty much a uh free mod that every fcx truck that runs these axles should should pretty much have done there's really no downside to doing it and you can see we remove this one put it on the back this one's still there so i'll show you the difference so there's your stock turn radius you can see the knuckle hitting on it okay and then here's after huge difference okay that's why we do it pretty awesome free upgrade look how close it gets to the chassis right so that's that that's that huge difference Another quick thing I thought I'd show, um, not that I'd recommend this, but if you're looking for this look, you can you can do it. You can kind of give it a little bit of a stretched and squatted look by angling the portal axles or the portal housings. And I'll show you that real quick. You basically just take those same screws out that we took out on the front. That'll let us pull our portal housing off completely. Just like so and then you can actually clock it right like about there okay now there is a little tab on the axle so you will have to trim that tab off that tab is designed to help kind of let the screw you can see it in there kind of pinch onto there but i have never had an issue with the portals coming off i run these on a monster truck they're stretched out like this never once had an issue so i feel okay doing this if you don't feel okay doing it don't do it but i don't have any issues with it just trim that little tab off and you should be golden the original fcx axles didn't come with this little tab on here like the butcher the very first butcher release they didn't have this so that's how i was able to do it the first time and then boom you just kind of tuck it in let's see you know, gotta make sure your axle shaft is lined up inside it's kind of hard to get going sometimes there we go turn this and tuck it all right so you can see the difference here A little bit a little bit stretched it's going to be a little bit lower let me see if i can get a good shot for you so here's your before normal portal axle and here's your after a little bit stretched out a little bit squatted in the back basically you're doing this putting a slight angle on that that portal kind of a, a cool thing to do if you want it just to be a little bit lower you can't really do the front because of the steering linkage and all that good stuff um, you could totally flip them and then they'd be upside down and suck it super low but then you're gonna have no no clearance you could do that on like a, a monster truck that doesn't need clearance in the diff but uh, for a crawler you're gonna want some clearance this doesn't lower that clearance too much you can kind of see it's just a little lower a little more stretched out Okay, you can see it there, how much stretch you get. All right, pretty cool, pretty cool. 
Free mods. Free mods are cool. There's the rear. Totally done. Maybe when we just reposition these shocks back a little bit, it'll drop the front a little bit. And it's dropping it in different ways, right? The geometry of the spring, the shocks versus the geometry of the axle itself. So bringing our shocks back will give us a little bit more flex and potentially lower it if it's on the same plane here. But further back, it would lower it and give us more articulation, more travel. Um, because the closer the top of your shock gets to your links, the more angle you have like this, the more articulation you're going to have. But it also means the more, less predictability. It's going to be a little bit more sloppy if you go too far. Um, but lowering it that will, that way will actually lower it here on the links, right? These links will be now different, the geometry of the links at full extension versus full versus the new position would actually drop the links down. Whereas here, we didn't change any of that geometry of the links or the shocks. We just lowered the axle height. So it'll be two different ways of lowering it. Um, but we should be able to lower it just a little bit like this by just moving our shock back. So we're literally just going to drill a little tiny hole right here into our, uh, our chassis and we're going to move our shock back. We're just going to simply move it back. Now it's not going to be reinforced. It's going to be at a little bit of an angle. It's not totally ideal, but it's what we've got to work with here. So that's what we're going to do. You need to make sure if you're going to do this, that your shock holes are going to be the exact same on both sides or your truck will sit lopsided. Okay. So make sure you're putting them in the exact same spot on both sides and you should be good to go. We're going to make a hole that's slightly smaller than our screw. And then we're going to have the screw thread in basically. Now be careful if you're doing this because your electronics are in here. So if you're really worried about it, take your hood off so you can see how far you're going in there. I knew that I wasn't going to go in very far at all. I just wanted to get just a little bit of a hole started. Kind of clean this up a little bit. And then we're going to try to thread our shock straight into that little tiny hole. Okay. All right. This is kind of a fail. I just figured I would uh, share it with you guys. Anyway, I went ahead and did it and it doesn't really work as well as I had hoped. Um, I went ahead and mounted the shock further back, right? Which is what, where we would like it, ideally. The problem is, you can see it, it puts the ball joint at an extreme angle, right? Instead of the ball joint being perfectly straight into a mounting spot like this, the ball joint's angled pretty extreme, about like that. Okay, and what that means is that the ball joint's reaching its limitations and you can almost see the shock wanting to pull itself in. See how it's angled? It's kind of going inward and inward this way, which is creating binding. So it's, it's not binding horribly, but it's definitely not as smooth as this side. This side is super smooth and this side, you can even hear it almost, has a little bit of binding. So you could run it this way, but it's not ideal. And the only reason it's binding is because, again, the ball joint's coming in at an angle like this. You can see it coming through here. It's just coming through at too much of an angle. If we were able to mount it flat, it would be perfectly fine. This is why I wish designers would consider stuff like that. They could have just flattened this out in here and given us three or four holes or even just two holes. I don't care. As long as it was flat there, give us no holes and we can put our own holes in, whatever. But they could have easily just flattened this out. Mind you, it wouldn't have looked as clean, right? But that's okay. I want the shock mounting position. So they should have just made this nice and flat basically brought this all the way back across here flat on the inside and then same with the back here like I said just kind of bring this in more and give us two or three more shock mounting positions instead of bringing it all the way out they could have brought it in just a little bit more and they're probably trying to triangulate this look here I don't know I'd rather have a little bit of extra functionality on this and have this look just a little different and uh, be able to have much better shock mounting positions and drop the sky lower. Anyway, it does lower it a little bit. You can't really see it too much, but it's a little lower. And it's hard to tell because I lowered the be the rears, but you can see compared to this side, you can see how much gap there is here, right? Like between here and here, 
go between here and here versus on this side you got less gap okay we're probably gonna put it back in our stock spot for now though and then we'll just have a little hole there not a big deal not the end of the world again i'd rather do something like this on one of these little guys that's under 200 bucks than on like a big $500 truck, you know? And again, you're, you're not even messing anything up. You're just, you're just putting a little hole in the chassis and worst case, change the chassis or body. Hell, maybe I'll put a rock light in there now, right? Whatever. That's why we try things though, guys. That's why we try things. Never hurts to try. So I went ahead and went back into these because I wanted to get it to work. And, you know, it's just a matter of getting the screw to sit a little bit more, you know, horizontal versus like this, sitting flush up against this wall because this wall is pretty angled, this inner fender. Instead of going flush into that, I went ahead and tried to screw it in a little bit more straight. So instead of like that, like this, and that got rid of all the binding. And they're still pretty angled. I mean, you can see, though, that there's a little bit of space under there that uh, isn't sitting flush. It's not It's not sitting totally up against the fender like this. It's a little bit more like this, but still at an angle, right? Yeah, I mean, that's still a pretty good sized angle, but just getting it so that it's a little bit less at a, of an angle gave us much smoother articulation. The shock doesn't bind up up in here, up against the screw itself. You know, it actually has total freedom of movement now so we were able to just drop this down and look it drops almost again make sure it's equal on both sides when you screw them in you want them to be equal uh angles equal distance everything is exact exactly the same you want to be symmetrical otherwise it's going to sit kind of kind of goofy but there we are I would say we're pretty damn perfect you can even see under full compression we're bottoming out the shocks before we hit anything on the chassis okay it looks like the servo is hitting but it is, oh, it might be just a little bit. It, but it's it's bottoming out the shocks for sure because I can, uh, let's see, if you go like this, see that? That's that's me pushing down on the hood. Okay, and on this side, same thing. Like, it's pretty much perfect. It's as low as you're gonna get without hitting on the servo. And then this front, front part right here is not hitting either. It's just, I mean, you, it's hard to see. It's not focusing, but. There you go. Look at that. Like that's under full compression. Perfect. Right in there. So it worked out really well. I think we got just kind of lucky, but I did, once I did one side, I measured the distance between the hole here and where we put our little mark. And then from the top down to the mark, just to make sure that we were as symmetrical as possible. And it turned out fairly well. So now it definitely sits a little lower. We had a little bit more flex. Um, and you'll notice off camera, I did this. These are a drive shaft and the links and Y-Link off of the LC80. So we went ahead and stole our LC80 rear links or front. It doesn't matter which ones because they're the same. Um, and I wish this is how it would have came. I wish it would have came with a little bit longer links in the rear. If FMS is out there watching, just because it's a shorter wheelbase or a longer wheelbase doesn't necessarily make it 18th or 24th, guys. So if you were to have put longer links on the rear here, it's still 24. Give us some rear link option lengths. If you look at the SCX 24, they just give us a bunch of different link options and it lets us build better wheelbases. You know, I think a bigger determining factor on scale is just the body size itself, not the wheelbase, but the actual body size, as well as like the wheels and tires. You know, if you're going to put big wheels and big tires on a big body, I don't care how short the wheelbase is, it's going to be a larger scale. So, uh, but anyway, so we were able to snag out uh, the drive shaft. And actually, the interesting thing is this side of the drive shaft is the exact same length uh, as this side on here. So the FCX 24 drive shafts on the male side are the same. It's just this. So we basically stole this part of the drive shaft, our upper and lower links, and now we're stretched. We went ahead and put our uh, portals back to normal 90 degrees. So they're not, we could stretch it even more using what we showed earlier, putting the portals at a little bit of an angle. But I figured this is plenty. It also can uh, help us maintain our ground clearance for our, our diff. Um, but if we want to stretch it a little bit more, we could. And in my opinion, I think we get a much better looking stance. Again, this is not a free mod. It is something you'd have to get these links. 
but you can use other links, you know, anything that's a little bit longer than what we've got, but it just goes to show that stretching a little bit really helps that. Changing the shock mounting here really helps that. And I just think the truck looks a lot more hobby grade, more aggressive. Just looks like a much cooler truck now. Start to add up all the little things, even our wheels and tires. You know, we're always gonna swap out wheels and tires. The stock tires are not good. They're, I don't know, they're so hard. Look at these things. They're also kind of thin. They're just tall and thin. I don't know. I don't know what, what's up with these. I think that aids in making it look real high, right? They're a little bit taller, so it sits a little bit higher. They're thin, so it looks like it's missed, skipped leg day or something. I don't know. These, these tires, I think, really hurt the look of this thing. And they're not the best performers, guys. Um, they could have kept the wheels. Just give us some thicker tires. A little bit more meaty looking. And I think people would have liked it a lot more. I think you'd have to agree that this looks like a much more aggressive uh capable rock crawler or even rock bouncer or even trail rig like just <laughs> however you want to put it i think this just looks a lot a lot better um and it's going to perform a lot lot better so make sure you uh tell me your opinion down in the comments below what do you guys think did we uh did we kind of do a little bit better here i think we're looking good and one last little thing before we leave just in case you didn't watch my full deep dive video on this guy which i'll post over here um, when you buy this out the box, it's going to have forward, brake, and then reverse. Forward, brake, and then reverse. Which is not really our preferred mode of drive for crawling. So the preferred drive mode uh, is just forward, reverse. And the, to get that, you're going to go to your remote and you're just going to double click reverse. You'll start blinking. Then you'll hit your bind button until you get forward, reverse. Looks like it takes three clicks. And actually, I just noticed the light looks like it goes off. Uh, no, oh, that is the determining factor. Oh, no, it's not. So it has nothing to do with the light. You just have to click it until you get order reverse. I think it's three clicks. Anyway, just wanted to show you that little tip in case you missed our dive video, our deep dive video, and then just double click reverse to get out of it. So, all right, guys. Well, I was going to show swapping the electronics from the front to the rear. Uh, I think I might do that in a different video. This video is getting kind of long. and I just wanted to show some quick, easy upgrades and tips, things, just little things that help make this better, in my opinion. So why don't you tell me down below which of these mods are your favorite or which you're most likely to do? What's the first thing you would do to this guy? Um, of course, we can throw money at it and all that kind of stuff, but I was trying to do it as cheap as possible. Um, I mean, the only real money that's in this thing, I guess, are the links and the, um, the OGRC wheels and tires, but these are pretty cheap on Amazon. We can throw a link down in the description below. Uh, as far as these suspension links are concerned, you can pick up a set from like Fair RC or FMS directly, or you can just get a custom set of links. Look for anything that's the FCX 18 length, and you can do it. You can also build custom links. We've got a video on custom link building right over here. Um, yeah, tell me what you think, guys. And if you don't have anything to put down in the comments below, at least just put uh, hamburgers and applesauce. I don't know. Tell me that you watched the whole video by putting, yeah, hamburgers and applesauce down in there. Um, we're having hamburgers for dinner tonight, I think. I don't know why applesauce. Because things, things are just funnier when you say and applesauce. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, guys, I hope you had fun. I hope you do something awesome with your lemur. Make sure you share in all the groups any kind of upgrades you do to your lemur. I think I think this is a very capable and awesome looking rig if you just do a little bit of work to it. It's a shame that they didn't kind of do some of this stuff out of the box. Um, I really wish they would talk to more of the community members. They don't have to be me. They don't have to be other YouTubers, but at least people that are building stuff and doing things. I mean, and all it takes is a picture. Send us a picture of the truck and we'd be like, hey, we can just see from the picture. You need, you should add shock mounting points or the 3D renderings or the concept sketches or something. Cause I know that once it's, you know, once they have a prototype, they don't want to change a lot. Uh, cause it costs a lot. Uh, but still any kind of feedback at any point of the process, I think would help improve these guys a lot and could help when you get to something like this. FMS has been killing it lately, but, uh, this guy was almost a miss. And I think for some people it is a miss, but I think once they start to see what people are doing with them, they're going to, they're going to appreciate a, a lot more. Um, also if the price point on this guy would have been like 130 or 125, I think it would have been a killer deal. Um, 140, 145 is, is kind of getting to the point where people start to say, well, maybe I just want to get an LC 80. That's all upgraded metal links, bearings, all that stuff. But anyway, um, 
yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you get out there and build something awesome, build a car, build a course, build a community, and then smash it, crash it, and bash it, but don't break the expensive parts. Peace. Thank you.